Welcome to your Fulham Fix, the fortnightly show about everything to do with Fulham for you guys, the fans. And uh, joining us is 50% of the Matchday Commentary Dream Team. It is Mr. Jamie Reid. Jamie, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you, Ivan. A pleasure to be here. It's uh, very good to have you here as well. And uh, as well, joining us, uh, donning the 140-year anniversary shirt, looking, uh, looking very good at the moment, Sean Davis. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Good. Missed you. It's been a while. Yeah. I've missed you too. I've missed you too. It's uh, lovely to see you. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, you too. I thought I'd wear the you know, shirt, make a few people jealous. Yeah, it's very nice. I, I think that's been sold out, long sold out. So uh, good job getting your hands on that. Um, and joining us as well, our special guest today, a man that since joining for Fulham at the start of October has transformed our defence. Is our number five, Joachim Anderson. How you doing, man? Hello, I'm good, thanks. Nice to see you guys. Yeah, you too. You too. I just uh, we're just discussing your shiner, and this is this is uh, uh, who's responsible? Whose elbow was that? Uh, it was Cavani just in the last minutes of the game, actually. Yeah. So it, it, I mean, it does look. Get, come a bit closer for us. Show us. Uh, show us that a little bit closer. That's a proper. Did he apologise after? No, I, I don't even actually. He, he didn't notice. I think. No. It was just like in a duel, like the last minute. So. He just ran further and then that was all right. Kind of happen, no, it's right? one of those things. Hey, it's a hero's wound, mate. It's a hero's <laughs> wound. Uh, how was training today? Yeah, it was nice and light. You know, a lot of the guys played yesterday. So a small group. Um, yeah, so just light training. We have a game on Wednesday already. So, yeah, it was, it was nice and easy. Well, it's a big game coming up on Wednesday. We'll get to that in just a bit. But as always, we start with our big three. These are where we look back uh, in the last few weeks in the world of Fulham at our big three talking points. Uh, and we've got to start, as we have you on the Fulham fix today, Joachim, uh, we've got to discuss our, uh, our defensive turnaround in the league. Uh, in the last couple of months, we've become one of the hardest teams to score against, one of the hardest teams to beat. Uh, Joachim, uh, you're a big part of our defence, obviously, in the centre-back. Uh, what's your reasoning behind this? Um... It's quite difficult to say because, to be fair, I didn't I didn't watch um, a lot of the games before I came. Um, I watched some of them, and and also from from what I could see of, we we conceded a lot of goals. Um, but since I came, like I, what I've been seeing in training and 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 experienced is like that. I feel we we're, we're getting to know each other more and more, and and I feel I have a good. Partnership with Tosin and, and Ola, um, and also Jedi and now and now Kenny, and who else played there on the right wing back, um, and like our yeah how we say, just in training how, how we are we training the the line and how how we are communicating on the pitch is is becoming better and better and and it's it's really hard for the opponents to score against us. That must be a pretty good feeling. You have a really good chemistry, like you said, with uh, uh, with basically what is ultimately a totally um, brand new defence. Are you surprised about how quickly you guys have gelled? Uh, to be fair, I'm not, I haven't thought about that. I'm, I'm just trying to go to every game to to win it, and 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 I'm not I'm not trying to think a thing too much, and and I feel like that. That our recent games we we performed really well and and we deserve, deserve more than than we got. Yeah, no, agreed, agreed with that. Uh, Sean, you've witnessed obviously many many Fulham games uh, from the start of the season. We've been talking about um, the issues that we've had in defence um, since Joachim and Tosin have uh, have joined the force. It really is um, an incredible turnaround, isn't it? From the start of the season, yeah, I think he's right on when he says they're building relationships. And the only way to do that is training day in, day out, uh, forming a bond, knowing what each player is going to do, all being on the same page. I do believe the midfield now, you know, protecting the back four, which helps, you know. And as a team, communication is vital. If you've got the right communication and everyone's on the same page, it helps in the long run. It's, it's been been a lot better since. Obviously, the guy, the new guys have come in. Absolutely, uh, you name checked a couple of defenders that, um, sorry, midfielders that you think are a, a big part of, as well of um, of protecting the defence. Um, 
uh, Harrison Reed, obviously, and Anguissa. Uh, yeah. How important are those two players then to this this setup? Oh, massively. If, if they're not there protecting the back four, it's, it's so easy to get the ball into the front man's feet, to get them turned. Uh, what they do well is they shut the space down well and the teams are finding it hard to play in between the lines so they're going wide but it, when they're going wide we've got a lot of aerial threat in the middle as well to clear it away so uh, without that protection it, it makes it, it with that protection it makes it a lot easier as a defender yeah agreed uh, Jamie as well now you're uh, like myself you mingle in the, the media circles a little bit I've, uh, I've seen you at a few sort of press junkets uh, in places and, and there's always been talk especially at the start of the season um, about Fulham's defensive frailties, you know, a lot of um, sort of uh, big pundits, um, you know, just talked about us shipping goals and the fact that we were done for the season. How, how surprised are you uh, by this incredible um, turnaround, uh, specifically with our defence, but also becoming one of the toughest teams to beat at the moment? I'm not overly surprised, Ivan, because I think the club's brought in some brilliant players. The goalkeeper's absolutely fantastic for me, Ariola. I think he's been a brilliant addition. And you look at the players in front. I mean, the man who we've got today with us, uh, Yoa, is a leader, isn't he? He's wearing the captain's armband and he fully deserves to wear that armband because he's put in some great displays since joining the club. The partnership that he struck up with the other two central defenders, the wing backs. And as Sean said, not only the midfield, but I think it's the uh, the forward players as well. Cavalero might not be a traditional number nine, but he certainly defends from the front and it makes it difficult or more difficult for opposing sides. So I think great testament has to be given to the players. I think it has to be given to the coaching staff because they've clearly worked on a structure in training and it's paying off, isn't it, when uh, the players go into matches? It really is. Um, it really is paying off. It is an incredible turnaround. And it's a joy to watch Fulham play at the moment um, in the league. It really is. Um, our talking point number two, you mentioned him just there, is uh, the brilliant Alphonse Ariola, um, An absolutely uh, world-class keeper, showing um, his quality, uh, especially recently, making some game-changing saves. Um, Joaquin, uh, tell us a little bit about um, Ariola. What's he like behind the scenes? What's he like as a person? Um, he's a quiet guy, actually. Um, also, you know, he's just like a really good guy. You feel like he have nothing, he have no, I would say, no bad, no no bad things inside of him. He's just like uh, always smiling and uh, just a really good guy. You know, you can really sense that in a person, and and you can just sense that with him. And of course, he he's nice to have behind you because. Everything he does is so safe and you're just comfortable with him behind you and, and you know that if maybe a, a striker is getting past you that he, he can save the, the ball. So if he, if, is he quite a quiet guy on the pitch as well? You mentioned, is he, he's quite off the pitch, but it, it, you know, if he, it, is it tough if he's not that vocal on the pitch? Um, no, because for me, I understand him and I, I also think that he understands me. So I... We know each other how how we want to play and and already before the game um, we we know what we have to do and and I'm trying to take responsibility responsibility in the communication way and um, and for now that that's good I think it works you guys have, uh, have found something that works well he really is a, a fantastic keeper. Um, Jamie, uh, you've obviously witnessed a, a few uh, keepers in recent years. We've had some very, very good ones. Um, how do you think Ariola compares? I think he's right up there. Obviously, it's uh, still early days for him, and we have been very, very fortunate. I mean, I think you have to go a long way to look beyond somebody like Edwin van der Sar, Mark Schwartz, are two fantastic goalkeepers a bit further back. Jim Stannard, obviously not of the same standard, but he was very good as a Fulham goalkeeper. Jerry Payson, I mean, there's been some great goalkeepers down the years and I'm probably missing out quite a few, so apologies to all of those custodians. But he is very, very good. I'm just so surprised that we've managed to get him because I think he's better than Navas and I just can't believe that uh, we've got the opportunity to bring him here and play in the Premier League. He's been a wonderful addition and I think Fulham have really benefited from uh, the qualities that he's got as a goalkeeper. Agreed with that. Sean, um, a few names uh, mentioned there you've played with as well yourself. 
uh, you've played with. Uh, obviously, you, you've, you've followed Fulham for the years. Again, uh, Alphonse Areola, uh, a fantastic keeper. How does he compare um, to the likes of, of Schwarzer and Van der Sar? Well, the first thing is to find out a goalkeeper's quiet is I'm amazed because all the goalkeepers I've played with were literally off their heads. Normally, the goalkeepers, they're just crazy individuals. Uh, mm -hmm. But if I'm going back, obviously, I first started, uh, Mark Walton was in goal. He was a good goalkeeper. But then we signed Mike Taylor, who was a fantastic goalkeeper. He was always, I think his strong part of his game was coming out and, and taking the ball out of the air out of the air, which just takes so much pressure off the defenders and obviously the holding midfielder. Uh, but you can't really go past uh, Van der Sar as probably the top goalkeeper uh, who's played for Fulham over the years. But he's, he's going to give him a good run for his money. If he uh, manages to keep the form that he's in at the moment and, and Fulham stay in the Premier League, then that's, that's almost legendary status, isn't it? It is legendary status. Uh, we'll absolutely take it. I think this entire team would become a, a, a team of legends there. Uh, our big talking point number three is the difficult run of games uh, is now officially behind us. It was um, a period coming up that a lot of fans were uh, slightly concerned about, but we got through okay and quite frankly were probably unlucky not to get a lot more points um, from the games. We'll start with um, we'll start with Spurs. Um, given uh, Joachim uh, only 48 hours notice before the Spurs game, um, when did you first hear that this was a possibility? Um, I heard it mon in the mo Monday morning. Um, I had a chat with uh, with Scott, and he told me that we might could play. Uh, so, so that was the first time I heard it. Because and when you when you hear uh, that, are you um, is that frustrating to hear, or are you just chomping at the bit? Do you just want to get on and play every game that comes your way? No, actually. It, I was happy because, like, I I felt that that Spurs was a good team for us, and 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 the last time when we went to Spurs, we were a little bit upset because we really felt that we we could win that game, uh, and and the game got cancelled. So, um, I really want to beat them. So <laughs> I was I was happy that we could play them on, on that Wednesday. Uh, and when you hear um, people like Mourinho uh, saying, you know giving a little bit of smack talk before the game, talking about the fact that uh, Fulham should be apologising if we field our best squad. Does that drive you? Does that spur you on to want to sort of, you know, go, there you go, Jose, come on. This is how we play. Come on. Uh, to be fair, I didn't, I didn't hear anything about that before the game. But uh, I could understand that, uh, that Scott was a little bit upset because he said something in the, in the team meeting about this. Um, but yeah, Mourinho is like that. He likes to to talk a little bit dirty, you know, uh, in, in yeah. that matter. Um, but but the way also the way Tottenham are playing at the moment, it really it really annoys me. So I just want to beat them. So it's just yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> hang on. So what, hang on. What do you mean by that, um, you two? So you mean as in as in how they're playing that kind of defensive that that sort of um, sit back style that annoys you? Yeah, it, it it annoys me that you have so good players and you play football like that. So that that really really wants me to beat them. Yeah, well, we were close. This is this is the the I mean the, the truly unlucky thing. Looking at all these games, um, you know the Spurs game, the Chelsea, the United game. Um, Jamie, how unlucky were we um, not to get more points from those? Well, I think we were very unlucky. I mean, it came on the back of three tough games, having that Spurs fixture slotted in. I thought the players acquitted themselves really well. Um, and I think had the game gone on another five, ten minutes, I'm confident that we would have won that game. And that just goes to show how far the group has sort of come. You look at the middle game of the three, the Chelsea fixture. And again, I think we were every bit as good as them. I didn't think they played very well on the day. They were a little bit fortunate to score the goal. You take the goal out of it, I don't think there was really anything in the game. So we might have taken something from that. I think the Manchester United fixture was perhaps the toughest. But again, we acquitted ourselves really well. And I think it shows just how far the uh, defensive ranks have come when you come up against those quality players. And it's not just Cavani, is it, through the middle. There's a number of players, you know, in wide areas who can cause you problems, who can hurt you. And we stood up to the challenge very well. Again, it took a special goal, didn't it, from Pogba to win it? Hmm. A very, very special goal. Absolutely. 
Uh, Sean, as well, we'll touch on Chelsea, a team that you've played many times as well uh, when playing for Fulham. Um, if we, we finish that game with uh, 11 men, arguably we're winning it, hands down. Is that fair to say? They struggled. I mean, they, at certain points, with 10 men, we looked like we had it. It's difficult to say, obviously, in sending off some fortunate uh, from Phil for him, really, because he's, he's played really well all season. And as a player, when you get sent off, you, you kind of half blame yourself. And uh, would we have won the game? I don't think we would have lost the game. Uh, but it, it was another good performance. I know some certain pundits will say, oh, Chelsea were poor or Tottenham were poor. But sometimes you've got to give credit to, you know, to, to us and how the managers set up the team how the team have defended, uh, how they've done the basics well. Uh, and I think that's probably one of the main things. The team are doing the basics well, very, very well. We're defending well. We're making good decisions at the back. The only problem is we're not putting the ball, we're not punishing teams when we can, but hopefully that will come and that will be the turnaround and, and push us on for the rest of the season. Uh and it's just uh, it's just been announced in the last sort of half an hour or so, Lampard uh, has parted ways with Chelsea. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts on that at, at all at the moment? Well, to me, it's it's all about, you know, did he bring in these players for me? Did he bring in these German players? Because it's rumoured that he wanted to buy other players and he's brought them in. Now Chelsea are linked to a German manager. Did Chelsea have the intentions of bringing those players in to then bring a German manager? There's so many rumours in football. It's always wild spread, but I think it's harsh. I think it's harsh. You never like to see anyone get the sack, but to be fair, my main concern is Fulham and Scott Parker. As long as we keep him, I'm happy. OK, so looking on to our next couple of games, Joachim, these are uh, massive, massive games. What's the atmosphere like uh, in the dressing room, uh, at the training ground at the moment? I mean, it's, it's funny to be playing so well, yet to still be in the relegation zone. Is that affecting the players' confidence at the moment? Um, no. Um, if you look our last yeah, last ten games, I would say we met some really good opponents, um, and the only game I feel it was the serve that we lost was against uh, Man City. Um, all all the other games we could have won or, or get a draw. So so it's just about these small details we have to improve, like like. Uh, like putting the ball in the net, like um, don't make any any small mistake, you know, because the opponent will will punish us if we do that. And I feel like in the last against against Chelsea against um, Man United, that, that that was the way they score. If we make one small mistake, they score, um, and 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 we cannot do that. Um, but we 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 have so much confidence. I feel I feel like every game we're going to. We have the feeling before the game that we can win, Does, and doesn't matter who we are playing. So, so mm. these games now that's coming up is is really really important. As a fan, uh, watching like what you're saying there, watching on 100, percent I would say it feels like we could win every game. The, the confidence is high, not just amongst the players, but uh, amongst the fans too. Um, and it does feel like we, you know, we've got through a very very tough run of games. We've shown our quality. Um, and it, it just feels like it's now there for the taking. Um, two, two. I mean, two really, really massive, massive games. Knowing that you're playing teams around you, uh, and you know, after you know, come sort of, you know, the evening on Saturday, you could be out the relegation zone. Does that add? Does that add pressure to this at all? You're keen. Um, yeah, of course. There's pressure. There's pressure in every game, but. Especially when when we're playing these these teams, that that's that's the that's the games we have to win. But like I said, we have confidence and we we feel with, that we can win every game. So so to be fair, I'm not I'm not looking too much um, at the table at the moment. Um, I think there was one. I don't remember who said it now, but one guy in the team said that, um, or maybe it was it was Scott. That if you just take your points, you know everything is in our hands. You know if you just take your own points, then then everything will be fine. You know you can yeah. look at the opponent every, every every weekend. You just have to take your own points, and then 
then it will be enough to stay up. So, so that's what we're trying to do. Pleased to hear it. Um, Jamie, this is the, the definition of uh, six pointers, right? These next couple of games, just how important are they? Yeah, they're absolutely massive, aren't they? I think perhaps the Brighton game's even bigger because if we can pick up the three points on offer, then we only stay a couple of points behind them with that game in hand. I think you look at the fixture between the two sides at Craven Cottage, I don't see any reason why we can't go to the Amex and pick up the points on offer. They're probably better, aren't they, Brighton as a side away from home than what they are on home turf. So I think we travel fairly well. Um, obviously, we won't have the backing of supporters and that must be tough for the players. But I think there's every chance that we could get positive results in both of the matches. We've done really, really well, haven't we, to uh, sort of stem the flow and you know start picking up points. I think it's been very, very impressive. It would just be nice to try and turn some of those draws into wins because it does make a massive difference, doesn't it, with those two extra points for uh, victories. Sean, you've often, uh, you know, played uh, big games like this where you, you know, you're, you're fighting possibly, uh, you know, the uh, the underside of the table. Um, what's your advice for for the players facing big games like this? How do you get through them? Just take each game as it comes. Like you, at the end of the day, you, you're talking about we've got Brighton and West Brom, but whoever's first, Brighton, you concentrate on your game plan. You go to training. You do what you normally do. And then normally, I was a player that if I trained well then I kind of take it, it makes the Saturday easier. So I think they're two very different games. I think Brighton's a football inside. I think we can play like we did against Leicester and press high up the pitch and then hit them on the break. And I think that's a game that we can win. But then the West Brom game is totally different where it's going to be all about competing, uh, winning the battle, winning your second balls, coping with the long ball, uh, not giving away silly fouls. Uh, so it invites uh, them to throw the ball in the box. So they're, they're two different games, but take each game as it comes. You can't, like I said to you before, as a player, you should just concentrate on your next game. As a fan now, you look and you think, oh, if we pick points up here and pick points up there and they, they win or they lose. As a player, you can't do that. You just have to focus on the next game. And I'm sure Scott's got the lads doing that. Right, Akeem. Uh, we uh, asked uh, the fans if they had any questions for you. We've got loads and loads of questions. Would you be up for answering some for us? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So first up, Fulham FC Asia. I uh, want to know, what are the main differences of playing as a defender in Italy, France, and now England? Do you have to change your game much? Um, I feel like the way, the way we're doing things here is quite similar to what, what I did in Italy. Um, I also think that's one of the reasons why I feel really comfortable because many of, uh, many of the principles we, we're having, like what we're training on, is is quite similar to what what we did in Italy. Um, but but in France it's more like one against one. Um, we have some crazy strong um, African players, and they're quick and. You're like left to your own. You don't get some. You, you don't get get so much help like 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 here in uh, in Italy. I feel like you you are more up. Yeah, how do you say? It's more up to yourself uh, in France, and here you're having like more backup. So um, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, Jack Smith wants to know uh, who has the best pre-match rituals at Fulham. We'll start with you, Joachim. Do you have any pre-match rituals? Are you a superstitious man at all? Oh, no, it's, it's, it's not anything I'm doing off. Um, I'm, I, I don't know if, if anybody is, is doing something special. I, I, haven't, I haven't noticed it. But um, one, thing, or one thing I'm doing is I have like a list on my phone uh, with like key, key things that I, I have been focused on in the game, so I'm always like reading that list, and then I'm yeah, closing my closing my eyes, and then I'm remembering these things without reading it. So, so that's that's what I'm doing. Do, do you mind me asking what sort of thing on the list, or is it sort of a little bit secretive, a little bit personal? No, it's just like in the game, like to win my jewels, to be on my toes, commu communicating, like. Oh, just football stuff. 
Nice, nice. Uh, Sean, I might have asked you this before, but I can't remember. Did you have any pre-game rituals at all? Anything you like to do? No, not really, to be honest. Uh, I knew a few players that used to put their right boot on before their left boot or... Nah, but nah, not really. You can just relax, chill out, get a massage and, and just get ready for the game. I'm, I'm not a very superstitious person. No. Good stuff. All right, uh, so Mark Holiday. Uh, he tweeted, how did the opportunity to join Fulham come about and what made you say yes, Joachim? Um, it came because um, I was in a situation at Lyon where um, I wanted to, to play every game, which not was the, which not was the case uh, at that moment. Um, and I felt Fulham really wanted me. Um, I had some conversation with Scott about um, how the team is playing and obviously I also looked myself how, how they are playing um, and I felt it, it really suited my, my playing style um, and yeah and that, that was the way it came up yeah nice yeah. Um, David Gad wants to know who is the toughest opponent opponent that you face mm. I would say Neymar is quite difficult to play against because he's doing so many crazy stuff and he can go left, right, and, and yeah, you don't expect Neymar. So, yeah Neymar. Yeah, so, some of the things you, you just don't expect him to do. So yeah, he, he's quite difficult to play against. Yeah, he, I mean, he looks it. And, uh, to be fair, he really does. He, it's hard to, to to pin him down. Yeah. Um, what about in the Premier League as well? Anyone that you faced this season that you thought you know this this has been you know a tough opponent. Mm. Yeah, to be fair, yeah, I think Harry Kane, Harry Kane was was typical. Um, also, Callum Wilson from Newcastle was also a good striker, I think. Um, yeah. So I think that that was that was the two who who, who catched my eye. Sean, who was the uh, toughest opponent you ever faced? Uh, probably, probably the Arsenal, probably Vieira. Yeah. Vieira he played in such such a good Arsenal team, but it was difficult, obviously, because they had Perez and Lundberg, Bergkamp as a holding midfielder. It could be any one of them, but a centre midfielder, it'd probably be Vieira or Scholes. Oh, yeah, I can imagine Scholes is a bit of a handful as well. Um, right, Tom Bartlett. Uh, wants to know, Joachim, what's it feel like to be given the captain's armband in your first season at Fulham? Yeah, it was a little bit uh, of, of a surprise for me and something that that I didn't expect. But obviously, is is a yeah big big uh, responsibility, and, and I'm really proud of it. To and I'm really yeah, I'm just really happy that that you will you will give, give me this trust and and. I think it gave me also a little bit of confidence, and and I feel like it's um, yeah, it's it's suiting me well. I feel. Uh, the follow-on question from this is probably going to be a tough one from you to answer uh, for you to answer personally, your team. So I'm going to throw it over to Jamie. Uh, Jamie, what is it? Do you think what are the qualities that your team has that makes a good captain? I think he's a leader on and off the pitch, and I think Scott has kind of touched on this. To give somebody the captain's armband at the age of 24, you know that they've got to be a special player. And I guess the positive for uh, Joachim, and it would be good to get his thought process on this, the fact that he's played in a number of different countries, you've sort of touched on it and the fans have touched on it in the questions that they've put. But I would imagine you have to quickly turn from a young man into a man. I think back to what I was doing at 24 and certainly I had a much easier time of it than playing in the Premier League, playing international football. And I hadn't obviously represented clubs all over Europe. So I think he's done remarkably well as a young man and clearly he's destined for uh, for greater things and he's been another wonderful addition. So uh, you can see that he's got a uh, mature head on uh, on young shoulders for me, Ivan. Here, here. We'll take that. Um... So uh, I tell you what, we've loads and loads of messages like this. So I've just picked uh, one of them, but probably about sort of 10, 15 questions, uh, all from different people saying, how much do you love Fulham? Um, can you see yourself playing for us next season? No, 
I'm really, I'm really, really happy here. And for me, my yeah, how, how long I've been here now? Four months, I think. Um, has been really amazing, and it was everything what I was looking for. Um, and and I'm really, really trying to do everything to to play play my best football, to to make Fulham play the best possible football. And and I'm really hoping that we will be able to stay up and I feel that we are on a really really good path to do that so of course you you can never say never in football and but 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 right now I'm really not thinking about next season I'm just thinking about yeah the next game and to to be able to to help the team that speaks to the captain love it very very good um like I said tons of messages that one particularly was from uh, Will Oakley there were loads, mate, asking if you'd sign permanently. We'll whiz through that. Um, you've given a very good answer. Alex, I think it's Alex. It's a, a, a weird mix of um, letters there. But he said, who's the scariest person on the training ground to play against? So, yeah, in your opinion. Um, of course, Mitrovic is always a little bit scary. He looks scary. Um, <laughs> he's a strong guy. Um, and... Uh, and maybe also Denis Odoi is throwing some crazy tackles at training sometimes. So, uh, <laughs> Does he really? Uh, so you have to stay away from him in training. Wow. Yeah, you be careful of that. You don't want to get injured in training from Odoi. <laughs> That's, uh, that would be disastrous. So we're saying Odoi and Mitrovic. I like it. Uh, Mark Walker wants to know, what's your favourite thing to do in London since arriving? Obviously, this is pre-lockdown. Do you know London well? No, I haven't actually visited that much before, before coming here now. But um, but yeah, it hasn't it hasn't been <laughs> hasn't been the funniest uh, period to be here because since I came here, like I think my only only the first two weeks things were open and since then there was lockdown. So I have I haven't been doing a lot. I no, went, I had some walks, uh, found some good coffee places, and that's it. Where are you living in Central, or are you uh, have you? Uh, are you in a place outside of the of the city? No, oh, I'm in central London. Yeah. Okay. Never tempted to sort of move out a little bit more to the sticks. I think a lot of the players go for sort of Walton or Isha or areas like that. Yeah, I know. I'm a city man, so. Yeah? yeah. And do you miss home a lot? Yeah. So sometimes uh, when we have some off, the, if some, we have three days, um, I'm going home to, to Copenhagen. Um, but that's also... That's also a little bit of uh, <laughs> the things you can't do at the moment. You cannot travel, so yeah. that's that's something I'm missing. Yeah. Without getting too into uh, COVID, is it is it what's Copenhagen like at the moment? Um, how's that country faring? Um, that's also a lockdown now, but um, there's not so many cases like here, and and I feel like what I can read that that they're getting everything under control now. So I think they're really on the edge to open things up now. So hopefully you might be able to go back and visit at some point soon. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> uh, right. A uh, few more questions and uh, then we'll let you get on with your day, guys. Um, so let's have a little look. Uh, at Fulham News wants to know, who's your footballing inspiration? Um, yeah, my favourite player is Zachary Rama, so, so that's him, I would say. Nice. Uh, at Joe has tweeted... Uh, what is your favourite centre-back partnership of all time? This obviously comes off the bat from of, of yourself and Tosin having formed a really, really strong centre-back partnership. Um, a lot of fans loving what they see from the two of you. So do you have a particular centre-back partnership that, you're, uh, that, that, you know, that, that you love? No. I, I, ne I never like, looked at partnerships in that way. I only look like one player. But, um... Who's your favourite defender, would you say then? That's Ramos. Yeah. Um, but if, if, if I should say a partnership, I like uh, John Terry Cavallo at Chelsea. Um, I, okay. I, I, used to, I used to watch Chelsea a lot because my dad, he also watched them when I was younger. With, uh, you know, Drogba, I really liked Drogba when I was, when I was younger. So, so I would mm. say these two guys. Okay. Uh, Sean, I wanted, I wanted to ask you that one as well, your favourite centre-back partnership of all time. Again, you played with some fantastic defenders. Well, no, I played with 
Give us, give us what you played with, and maybe your favourite. You know that you, that you've seen play. Uh, well, I played with uh, Ledley King at Spurs, and he was unbelievable. Uh, it's got to be Chris Coleman and, and and Andy Melville, really, just mm. just playing behind them, and we got on really well on and off the pitch. So, and Cookie was a great captain as well. So, for, for playing wise, yeah, Cookie and uh, Kit, but. I don't know, Ledley King just had something special. If he'd never had all those injuries, he would have gone on and played so many more times for England. He, he was very, very good. Good answer. Uh, right, one more, I reckon. Let's have a look. Frankie Taylor uh, wants to know, do you have an all-time favourite Fulham player? I don't know um, how closely you followed uh, Fulham over the year, Joaquin, but do you have an all-time favourite? Yeah, I like Berbatov. Um, I think he was quite good. Um, and also, I know, um, well, I don't know him, but because I, when I was playing in Holland, I played for FC Twente, and there was one guy, he's like really a legend at Twente, like Brian Ruiz. Um, so, so I think he's a quite good player, but I, I didn't know if he did well at Fulham, but I know at Twente that he's a legend. He scored some of the most outrageous goals in a Fulham shirt I've ever seen. Some of the most, uh, like, just sickening chips yeah. the keeper that you've ever seen. He had, he had a funny time at Fulham, um, but at the same point, I think was was, was really well respected. He's, I mean, he's, he's still going as well, isn't he? Still, still playing, still going strong. Yeah, I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure. I think he, he's out in one of the leagues. But uh, good answer. I really like that. Uh, Jamie, I'm going to throw this one to you, uh, as there's not been too many your way here. Do you have an all-time favourite Fulham player? I think you've got to look at either, haven't you? You look at goal scorers because they can change games. And we still get the opportunity to, uh, to see Gordon Davis, so uh, he would be right up there. I'd like to just gate crash if I could, and just get in a, uh, a cheeky little question to uh, to Yoa. I realise that uh, we're letting a lot of fans down because you've had so many and you've been inundated. But uh, if I could just ask him one quick question. Yeah. He's made a massive difference signing for Fulham. We're delighted to have him at the club. How big an achievement would it be for him? How big an achievement would it be for the club if they could, the players, that is, keep the team in the Premier League? What, what, what would it mean and how much of an achievement would it be? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Like, is to stay up or what? Yeah, so to stay up, if you could keep the team in the Premier League, you could stay up, you could avoid relegation. How big would that be for you? It would be a massive achievement, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course. That there was there was also one of the reasons why why I came here. Like I love challenge challenging uh, night challenges and um, and and I, I, li I like to show to people that when when they're saying oh a lot of people saying you're going straight to the chairmanship or, or, all kind of these things you know that that you can show them <coughs> that, that we can stay you know and. And if you, if you if you can achieve that with Fulham, then uh, it would really yeah, make me so happy. Yeah. Nice I, like one. I like that. Uh, we are actually going to end with one more question that's just come through, uh, which I really like, which is this the most unique signing you've ever been part of? Because uh, you've joined a club, mm -hmm. you've moved to a city that you've never really been to, and you're not even able, able to explore the city or any of the surroundings because of this lockdown. So you could literally be anywhere in the world right now. Is this the most unique signing, would you say? What do you mean by unique signing? As in, I mean, a lot of people have random signings. They could go anywhere in the world, mm. play for any club in the world. But you're signing for a club, but could literally be anywhere in the world because you mm. can't even explore the city. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course, of course. But... Um... No, I, I I can sense I can sense that it's a nice city. Of course, it's, it's London, you know. Um, yeah. So so I'm always I'm also um, I'm also glad to to be a place that uh, that I like and and I really like to be here. But of course, it's it could be better if if things were open. But I, I can really sense that it, it's it's a lovely place to be and uh, I feel at home here. Well, look, you're playing for uh, 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 in a fantastic city. Um, you are playing for a club that is uh, London's original club, London's first football club, the oldest club in London, the only important club in London. You're with them uh, and you're doing a fantastic job. The fans love you. 
uh, we're feeling so much more confident having you, uh, you know, at the back. It's um, it's exciting times, and I tell you what, you're giving fans a lot to cheer about uh, this season, and hopefully, we're going to have a very, very good uh, second half to this season. And um, listen, hopefully, towards you know, you'll come back on towards the end of of the season, and we can catch up again. Uh, and hopefully, we'll be in a, a very different position in the table, Joaquin. Yeah, I really, I really appreciate all the nice words and. Um... I'm sure that uh, we will have a nice talk at the end of the season. Fingers crossed we will. Uh, right, that's it for your Monday Night Fulham Fix. Uh, thanks to our guest, Jamie Reed. Thank you very much, Jamie. Cheers, Ivan. And thank you very much, uh, Sean Davidson. Of course, Joachim Anderson, our number five. Thank you very much. Cheers, um, cheers. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks. All the best. See you then.